Hello! I've been asked by so many people, how do I take care of my stones? How do I take care of my crystals? So today we are talking about how we purify the crystals. So the first major step, let's say. So let me introduce myself. My name is Marie Ditulio. I am the founder of Crystal Energy, where we teach people tips, tricks, and give them ideas or ways to feel better in their bodies. So my, my goal is to help you feel better emotionally, physically, mentally, and spiritually, all of that in your body so that you can enjoy life more using energy tools. So today we are talking about how to take care of your crystals. I, someone asked me that question and I figured, yeah, what a good idea to talk about that because the more you take care of your crystals, the more your crystals work even better for you. So let's start with the first major step. Maybe you bought your crystal, maybe you just, you were wearing your crystal and now you're wondering, okay, what do I do next? How do I take care of it? The reason you might be asking, I had a friend, she asked me, she, she bought a stone, she bought a tourmaline and the tourmaline worked amazing in the beginning. And a few weeks later, she calls me and she's like, every time I take the tourmaline, I feel like I want to kill my husband. That's not good. Well, I said, did you clean your, your stone? And she said, well, I didn't know I had to clean it. That's how important cleaning your stone is. So the first, first step, if the stone, especially if you're a therapist, if the stone was on the body, if it touched the skin directly, the first step I use is I use a rubbing alcohol, right? 50% rubbing alcohol is more than enough. So if, if you have a stronger than that, you can really dilute it. So you can put really 50% alcohol and the rest is pure distilled water would be the, the best. So you could do that. And basically I spray it. If it's a, if you know the hardness of your stone, that's how, that's why sometimes it's important to know how hard is your stone. The hardness. If your stone is really um, as a one, it's a it's a scale from one to ten. If your stone is a one, it's mostly like chalk, so it's really soft and it's going to be in the water. It will just melt. If it's a ten, it's the diamond, the the biggest, the roughest, the strongest one. Nothing will break it. It's used to break everything else or to cut everything else, right? So in between, there's a scale from one to ten. So if your stone is over a seven, you can definitely use the rubbing alcohol directly on the stone. So you could use it on the quartz and you could spray it. And what I usually do is I spray it on the quartz. Let's say, let me give you an example. I have this ball, so I just spray it on there. I usually make sure there's some, some rubbing alcohol everywhere. And then I use a cloth to just remove the extra. If it was, a stone that is not as hard. If you're wondering and you're not sure, just make it as if it's not a hard stone. So you're always going to use the same technique. Then I spray it on my cloth and I'll just put the stone in there afterwards with the intention of removing any type of bacteria. Just make sure it goes in all the cracks, especially if it's a cr crooked one like this one. So that's the first major step. If it touched the skin, if it's only for you, you don't really need to cleanse it that way. But if you're going to use it for the rest of your family, if you're going to use it with friends, if you're going to use it as a therapist, you definitely need to use the rubbing alcohol to cleanse it. Second, that's, that's the first major step. It's like removing the extra dirt, I would say. Second step then is to rinse it underwater. That's kind of like giving your stone or your crystals a shower. The same way we do it for our bodies, we need the shower to cleanse the outside or the skin of our bodies. That's kind of what we do. So what I do is I just turn on the tap water, cold tap water, and just let the, the water drip over the stone. Again, it's the same thing. If you know it's a soluble stone, like for example, salt, you know salt will melt under water. So then you won't use the water, you'll just probably spray water on your cloth and you'll use it on the stone with the intention of cleaning it. But if the stone is strong enough, is hard enough, then you're definitely going to use 
the stone itself, you're, you're going to put it under the running tap water and you're going to let the water just go and go and go. And sometimes if I have a, if I use many tourmalines, I'll just put all of them together and just let the water go over all of them. That works uh, really, really good. And you will see that, let me find an example. If like, let's say this one, if I used it a lot, you will notice when the water, as the water is running over it, when you put your finger on it, it just feels slimy. If there's a slimy feeling, you want to keep on rubbing until that slime is kind of gone. That's kind of the energetic stuff that we're trying to remove. So as you're seeing the, the slimy thing, you just put it under water until you remove, remove it. Another way to do that, which is also amazing, is if you have a river nearby, you could put it in the river. Major, major thing. If it's salt water, do not put in the salt water. Let me repeat. Do not, do not, do not at all cost put it in salt water. Unless you're a therapist and then we need to talk about it, but for anyone else, do not put anything any of your stones in salt water. Let me explain to you why. For example, I am sure if you're someone that loves the sun and the warmth and the heat like I do, you enjoy when you go south and you get to the beach and you enjoy the salt, the ocean, the, it's just amazing. It's amazing for your body as long as you're, just, as you're just swimming like a fish one day or every day for an hour. But if you were to stay there, let's say, you're lost at sea and you're stuck there in the water, then you would know it would definitely cause you damage inside because you're not made for that salt water. Same thing for your stone. Um, the salt has amazing properties. It removes the energy, it removes the extra. So when you're putting your stone on it, you're just removing the power of the stone. So again, no salt, no salt for your stones. One important thing also, no sun for your stones. The stones are born underground. They're not born, born on top of the world. So they're born underground because they, they just connect so much more with the energy of the moon, which we'll talk about later. So major, major, major thing, no salt, no sun for your stones. Okay, we've got that out of the way. So let's continue. So it's under wa running water. You could put, if you want, if you had a running um, river that could be in the river, usually I would say kind of find a, a, a net and just put the stones in the net. And uh, sometimes there's a place I go nearby where there's a, a little, a little place where water is kind of dripping from one place and it's kind of a little cave and there's water there, but it's like you could, you could, it's, it's not tight or it's not too uh, deep. And I usually bring my, if I have skulls, my skulls, I usually bring them there and have their water bath. So that could be something that you could put your stones there as soon, as long as you know that they're going to stay there. I just use it for five minutes, but if I go for a walk, I'll leave them there for, for an hour and that's totally okay. As long as the stone can take the water. For example, if you have a lapis lazuli, it's the same thing as salt. It's the same as the allied lamp, or it's the same as this one, which is the same as the allied. That's salt. That's a soft stone as well. Lapis lazuli. It will melt underwater. And um, salt will definitely melt much faster than this lapis lazuli. And sometimes you want to put it underwater to see just how amazing the color is. And if it's the stone is dyed, you will see it in the water. It will come out immediately for the lapis. But that gives you an idea that you will see how the water is. Uh, it, you want to make sure that the stones you put in there are not water soluble. To give you an idea, usually most of the time the stones that are water soluble tends to be aqua color or turquoise or deep blue. So with all of that range of color, I usually, instead of putting them under running water, I'll just put some a little water on my cloth and I'll just wipe them. I, I'll just wipe them with the intention of removing energy and then I'll take another cloth that is totally dry to remove the excess um, water that could be there right away. So I, that's the steps that I do with my stones. Once the shower is taken for your stones, that's my first step. 
second step is kind of like the detox part. So the detox, well, if you want to do a body detox, it's going to be some, it, it's going to take, it, it's more on the inside, right? So it works in a different way. So for me, the body detox for your stone or the detox, it's, it's, it's about when a stone works with you, there's some of the, and not that the stone is necessarily always absorbing, but there's some energy that is there. The same way as my friend, I told you in the beginning, she didn't cleanse her, her stone and the, and she could feel the ne negative energy. Well, that's all the energy it was pulling from, from the work it did. So you need to remove that from the stone if you want the stone to work better in the future to keep on working for you. So that's when I usually, I personally use amethyst. Amethyst is my best choice. Amethyst is an amazing, amazing, amazing stone to purify other stones. So I use amethyst. If you have it like this as a, as, as a Druze, you can definitely just, it's plain and simple, you can put your stone on there and it's getting a purification. So what I usually do, I put it there, I leave it overnight and the stone is getting cleansed. So that's my best choice. You could use that to cleanse anything. So you can cleanse your keys. How often are your car, car keys or home keys cleansed? You can cleanse the, your glasses. You can cleanse anything you feel that needs a, an energy renewal, an energy bath. So you could put, if you have a bracelet, you could put the bracelet on top. Any type of jewelry can be on there. If you have a, like a bracelet like this, I usually don't really put it under running water because running water might damage the cord. So then I'll always use the cloth technique to just um, to remove, uh, to cleanse it, to give it its physical shower the first time, right? So after that, I put my stone on the amethyst for a day and that's it, I leave it there. Another alternative to the amethyst, and it doesn't need to be a day. The amethyst works fast, so it could be for an hour, it could be five hours. To me, it's not harder to leave it there overnight, so usually I leave it there overnight, but it doesn't need to be. The other thing that's important, or another technique that you could use, is the moon. So when the full moon is, you know the full moon is coming, three days before is the time where it's really a cleansing energy for your stones. So you could put the stones by the window, you can put the stones outside. You can put the stones outside if you know that there's going to be no animals that will take it or eat it, that you don't want it, that could be dangerous. Or if you want to make sure there's no, um, it won't be raining on them, if they're water soluble. If they're not, it doesn't matter. But if they're, they're about to melt, then you want to make sure you know that ahead of time. And so you either take the moon or you take, the amethyst, to me, these are the easiest choices. There are different, um, there's other techniques that to me don't work as, as well as uh, the amethyst or the moon. You, there's some people that smudge their stone. There's some people that do all kinds of, that use um, Tibetan bowl or crystal bowls. These are all good techniques, but they're not my first choice. Um, to me, working with a stone, with the stones is the easiest are working with the moon, which we always relate to. Bonjour, Monsieur André, je suis contente que vous soyez là. Et, and, on, so on top of it, tourmaline, really, really easy to cleanse. And I want to let you know before I continue, because I always talk about tourmaline every single week, so you might as well know right away to take care of your tourmaline. You put it under running water, and then you could just, uh, that's all it needs really under running water. But if you want to give him, to give the tourmaline an extra hmm, something that's hmm, that will give him a bit more power. If there's um, thunderstorms, they love the noise. Thunderstorms or any type of um, storm outside, you could leave them outside in the storm. It will be great energy for them. Same thing with, with fairy stone. And I figured I would talk about fairy stones because I also talk about fairy stones all the time. So you might wonder, how do I take care of my fairy stone? Easy breezy, under running water, same thing. And then you also could use, uh, could do the same thing. If you know there's a thunderstorm coming, you can put them outside. It doesn't matter if the rain touches them, it's totally fine. So we talked about Amethyst to purify your stone, and we talked about the moon. 
I said the three days before are purifying. On the day of the full moon, it's more of a charging energy. But so how do you use it? You could, if you know there's a window in your house where there, the stones are going to be exposed for part of the night, if, even if it's just one hour, that's a good place to put them. Um, it, it could be outside if we're in a good season for it. Remember that, let's say if you have an opal, opal are not really great stone to have outside in the cold, they might crack. So don't have below zero here in Quebec, do not put your opals outside, that doesn't work for the opal, it needs warmth. Um, let, me sure, let me make sure I have covered everything. So if we have a stone like a turquoise, turquoise to take good care of it, remember it's soluble, it will melt over time. So you want to use a damp cloth, just rub it over, Once it, then you use a dry cloth and you rub it and make sure it's all. So we had the first step, first step done. Second step, you put it on amethyst or you could put it under the moon three days before the moon. I'm giving you the best way to take care of your stones. But obviously, if you wanted to just take care of your stone or you want to put them under the full, the full moon before, but you can do it just for one day. I prefer you do it for one day than not do it at all. If you want to do it like be all out, that's going to be a three day and either one is good, but you need to know that you can do that. And so the full moon is just that energy that is really cleansing them before and then charging them afterwards. And we'll talk next week about how to charge them. Uh, a stone I really want to talk about. I'm saying a stone, but it's not a stone as we talked about in the, in the past. So if you didn't see the episode on the amber, well, you can go back and watch it, first of all. So amber is a uh, raisin and it's just coming from the trees. It's really old and it's just an amazing sucker. That's what it does. It removes stuff from you and it works so, so great, but it really, it's hard to cleanse. So the only way to cleanse your your um, amber is with the sun. So it's the only stone I will tell you that, the sun. So you need to cleanse it, especially when you first get it, if you received it as a gift, it takes seven days to be cleansed. So if you're a therapist, chances are you might not be working with the amber so much because it's so hard to cleanse and it takes so much time. But what I do is I leave them, I leave them by the window and just let the sun take care of it. So if it's not seven days in a row, it might take a few, it might take longer if it's not sunny. So initially it takes seven days. Afterwards, once you've started using it and it's been cleansed the first time, then three days will be enough. But that's, it means it, it's a lot of work to take care of the amber. So you just need to know that as you're, if you're an amber fan. So I think I've covered everything. If you have any questions, don't hesitate. You can always ask me. You, I will answer you next week. I can email you right away. I, I'm, I, that's what I want to do. I want to serve you. So if you think this was helpful, if you think that could help someone else, please give me a few thumbs up. Please share with your friends so they know that there's someone that can teach them about crystals and how to use them to improve your body. So as always, I always tell you the same thing, but we just have one body and no replacement cards. So how are you going to take care of your body better this week? How are you going to honor your temple better this week? I'll let you decide on that, but I would, that'd be fun if you'd write to me, which ways are you going to change or improve or do something for your body this week? On that note, I'll see you next week. And next week we are going to talk about how to charge your stones. So this week we purified, next week we charge. Have a great week.